Fog Entertainment back again with another movie review and this time we are looking at The Ring. We are looking at a movie 21 year old came out back in 2002 and by God once you watch this film you better turn off your television set damn it because if you don't there's going to be serious serious issues. I'm going to let you know about that big man but let's go into this movie of course we do have a cast of Naomi Watts, David Dorfman, Davy Chase, we've got Martin Henderson, Amber Tamberley, we've got Brian Cox as well in there, we've got Polly Barrett who played Beth Dem, she's looking a wee bit rough these days, it does have a 7.1 rating on the internet movie database of course, but let's talk about it, we kick off the movie with two teenage girls, um, we've got Katie and Becca, they're discussing an urban legend about a cursed videotape now, there's like a jump scare here, it's like, ah, da, da, blah, blah. And then it turns out later that night, Katie, who watched it a week ago, which she let us know, is killed by an unseen force. And we get to see her body. Dumb, dumb, dumb. And actually came out almost 21 years to the day. Came out on the 18th of October 2002. We then have Katie's funeral. Um, her mother asks her sister, Rachel, a Seattle based journalist, to investigate her daughter's death. So, hmm, we're going to see this, and then Rachel, being the journalist that she is, discovers that Katie's friends have all died in bizarre accidents at the exact same time and night of Katie's death. Like, her, see when things like this happen, right? I know they're horror movies, and where would the fun be if, if people knew about it? Like, they knew that these things, like, they figured out, ah, this must be some connection here, but, like, it's almost like ignorance that people just don't believe people at certain points, man. Honestly, um, she then manages to find the tape and watches it. It contains strange and frightening images. She then receives a phone call from an unknown call who whispers seven days. And then obviously we know seven days for the intro of this movie. We've got Katie Bagard not looking good here. Though initially, though initially skeptical, Rachel quickly begins to experience supernatural occurrences linked with the tape. And then... In order to get help, she goes through the ex-boyfriend. And I thought she treated this guy like an absolute jobber. Big no. I thought no, was a pretty decent character. And he get jobbed out pretty, pretty badly. Um, she manages to identify, though, a woman on the tape who's a horse breeder by the name of Anna Morgan. She did kill herself after some of her horses drowned off of Minisco Island. So Rachel and Noah's young song, Aiden, um, ends up watching the tape. Aiden also possesses some supernatural abilities which he uses to help with Rachel's investigation. She then heads for Misoko Island. Um, now, what I just don't get here is she's on on her way to this island and she like interacts with this horse. It's like, can you not clearly see that because you're possessed, it's scaring this horse. She gets this fucking horse killed and the horse just runs straight off the boat. Honestly, I, I was I was willing to jump through the screen myself and, and bar big Rachel man honestly I just did not get her point here but she manages to uh, visit uh, Anna's widower who is by the name of Richard it turns out that she also discovered a girl Samara who possessed the ability to psychologically etch images on the objects and into people's minds and it tormented her parents and their horses now this is when Richard and um, gets pissed off and he starts to brawl with her and nothing really ever really comes of this. Um, Rachel does manage to find a birth certificate though that proves that Samara is in fact the biological child of those two. So, by God, what's going on? And Richard's like, no, you stupid bitch. Samara is evil and she committed suicide. And no, no, she's evil. And then he ends up just jumping in the bath after the little scuffle and he commits suicide by electrocuting himself. It's like, Holy shit. And then Noah and Rachel then head outside. They find a loft in the barn and it turns out this is where the Morgans used to stick Samara. And honestly, it's, it's a creepy image because like a big massive fucking ladder. And then, like that's where she sat. It's like, pfft, is that all about? Then they, then they return to the Shelter Mountain Inn because she recognised the tree from being there. And they find a well by God, Rachel falls inside the well and as it's beginning to close, um, Noah gets the fire hose, right, and he, he forgets to disconnect it and he's running and it just completely and utterly yanks him back and it's like, pfft. 
Jesus Christ, son, you are an absolute idiot, idiota. Honestly, what was he doing here? But these two then, she's rescued, right? We need to arrange a proper burial for Samara. Then back home, we get Aiden. He tells, he warns Rachel that it was a mistake to help Samara. And Rachel then realizes that Noah's seven days are up. And guess what? Our ghost crawls at the TV and kills Noah. Um, but she's unable to deduce here why she was spared. She's like, hmm, why did it not do that? She was obviously traumatized by this. And I think his co-worker was going up to the flat as she was going down. Um, and then Rachel manages to realize that the tape seen by Aaron was a copy she had created and realizes that, by God, what's going on here? She then manages to save Aiden by making another copy to show someone else. Aiden asks what will happen to the person who watches the copy, to which she doesn't answer. That's pretty much where our movie ends, but it does end with the viewers at home seeing the um, the copy of the uh, the movie. So that's pretty much The Ring. I remember watching it years ago and I thought it was a lot better. I mean, it's an all right movie, but I remember like when you're used to thinking of this movie, I was like, that's like, a, that's like an eight, eight and a half out of 10. Certain number. Looking back though, I'd probably give it a six. That may sound harsh, but that's a big Stevie dishes out, man. A six. So if you don't like it, fuck off back to TJ.